What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new keyboard from High Ground. This is the High Ground and Gundam Summit 6501W build, and this is super clean. Let's check it out. So first up, taking a look at it, this isn't your ordinary pre-built keyboard, both in terms of aesthetics and materials. High Ground's still using their Summit 65 footprint for the 01W Gundam build, which they have used on previous drops. And personally, I think it's really nice with the smooth and rounded edges to the all CNC aluminum white case. And then to tie their Gundam collaboration together, you have this really aggressive and eye-catching keycap set here with the 01 Gundam, where the keycaps are a five-sided die sub print with the characters printed on the front side so the top remains consistent with the graphical printing. It's bold, for sure, definitely, uh, but that's exactly what High Ground's going for here. Now you can buy these keycaps and other keycap sets separately through High Ground as well, but they're sold only in the 65% layout. I'll swap them out in a bit so you can see the other set that I picked up. Also to complement the 01W, underneath is a brass weight. The medallion's etched to the 01's helmet and is just the cherry on top, or bottom, to bring the whole theme together. Now with the basic introduction of the keyboard out of the way, let's take a step back real quick and take it from the beginning. Inside the nicely themed box, you get a USB-C cable. So just to note, the red coil one that I'm using for my B-roll is my own, a key switch puller, and a keycap puller that also doubles as a hex and Phillips head screwdriver. Pretty cool. And that also means the frosted wrist rest that I've been using also isn't included, obviously. I'm just using this during the B-roll to build the set for you guys while filming. But I really do wish they had a really nice, you know, custom themed, Gundam themed coil cable included as well, instead of just the, you know, traditional generic black cable. Speaking of which, plugging in the cable to the cutout on the backside will illuminate the integrated RGB lighting on both the sides of the board. There's this window there for some extra glow on your desk, and each key is individually backlit as well. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting. Let's pop off these keycaps. Inside the 01W, they're using their very own unique graphics switch, and they claim these are the world's first. And as you can see, each switch has a topographic pattern printed onto the top shell, which looks incredible. You guys know I'm all about it. This is their Thin Ice Geo Switch, they call it. It's a pre-lubed linear switch with a four millimeter travel distance, actuates at two millimeters under 33 grams, and you can see it has a rounded stem versus the squared stem that you're probably familiar with. Now, taking these apart, the construction on these is very interesting. The stem is made up of two separate pieces, with the clear plastic top where the keycap mounts, then the bottom section of the stem seems to be like a self-lubricating palm material. And just right out of the box, I'd say they're decently smooth, but these are just barely, and I mean barely, lubed, like they claim. There's practically zero residue anywhere to be found on the switch. I took a few of them apart, and it's like that everywhere. No remaining residue on the inside of the bottom shell, on the rails on the side. It's just the tiniest imaginable bit of lube. Now, that's a bummer for sure, because when you have such a unique looking switch like this, it would have made it so much better if they were properly lubed to complement the entire switch as a whole. But if they just put the tiniest imaginable grain of sand speck of lube on here that they're practically not lubed. So uh, super inconsistent here. Duroc V2 stabilizers though are properly lubed and they don't have any of that nasty rattle or inconsistency to them, which is definitely nice. But yes, for your backspace, your enter, the shift, the space bar, your traditional stabilizers here are properly lubed, which is good to see. Taking the board apart to get a deeper look, thankfully you can use the included hex tool, which they give you, which is super nice and it's very simple to get inside. Using the hex tool on the bottom of the keyboard, just remove the four screws. That's literally it. That's all you have to do. This is by far the easiest and most mod accessible keyboard that I've ever seen because typically there's bottom screws, screws in the top plate to hold it down, but nope, high ground's got to figure it out here. Once the top frame is removed then, the plate and PCB can be lifted up and you'll see it's gasket mounted with these rubber strips around the outside of the PCB. This is what gets sandwiched between the frame and the board to give it that sort of free floating design on the inside. And speaking of sandwich, there is a layer of silicone sandwiched between the PCB and the top aluminum frame, and a foam dampening layer on the bottom of the keyboard laying there as well to help absorb any of those micro reverberations inside to give it a deeper sound to complement the linear switches. Although this foam strip is very, 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 very thin. I'd argue it's not doing too much. 
So again, super easy to get into if you want to consider modding it, but really you shouldn't need to unless you want to do something like super specific. Now, like I mentioned before, they are selling other themed keycap sets for this Gundam collab. So I do have an extra set of their white Admiral caps. I personally really dig these. These are made specifically for this build. Again, it's just the 68 key set. So you don't get like, you know, other additional keycaps if you want to use this on your own TKL keyboard, for example. But I think this white Admiral set, it's just much more subtle and it's a mirror design of the brass weight underneath. So I'm personally a really big fan of that symmetry. I think this set just complements the board more. It also has these slight silver like shimmery characters on the set here. It's a really nice addition. Then the red coil cable I had wasn't doing too much. So I swapped that out with a white one. And now the facelift we have to the 01W on the Summit 65 is looking phenomenal. Honestly, any Gundam lover out there is going to be a huge fan of this final result. I think, you know, in terms of visual aesthetics, it's just super clean. All right, so now we'll do the sound test with the Summit 6501W keyboard using their Ice Geo switches. So a lot to unpack there real quick, because as you heard, they didn't sound lubed for a linear switch, right? I will admit they felt better than they sound and the stabilizers and stuff, they all felt really even and consistent, which was good. Not a lot of physical rattle or pinging to them. Um, so I'm happy with that, but just the fact that there is such a little lube, like I mentioned, really stuck out here. Um, it would have done so much better for this if they were properly lubed. Also, one thing I want to point out is for a gasket build, it is pretty stiff, which is, you know, one of the advantages of having a gasket keyboard build is that it's a bit more loose and flexible. That's, you know, what you want out of it. But here you don't really get that with this keyboard, which is a bummer. And I think if they would have reversed their internal materials, it would have given more of a softer gasket feel. So for example, for their gaskets, they are using that silicone material. If they would have used something, you know, like a traditional pour on switch, which had more give versus the stiffer rubber, it would have, you know, provided a more flexible build. So unfortunately, High Ground's doing some great stuff with visuals and aesthetics, but just the overall typing experience does leave a lot to be desired. Now, while I was gaming and using this, you know, I had no tangible physical problems, obviously, nothing in terms of like, you know, it cutting out, obviously anything groundbreaking like that, which would make this an automatic no-go for me. So everything was pleasant on that front. Yes, the linear switches also gonna be good for gaming. They're relatively light as well. Like I said, linear actually at 33 grams at two millimeters. So while using this for gaming, I had no issues. And obviously for the Gundam lovers out there, if you have a Gundam theme setup or something like that, add this to your setup and it is hands down the nicest looking Gundam theme keyboard out there. I know Asus had one maybe a year or two ago. That was eh. This is Gundam done right. And that's really where high ground has been shining recently with their collabs with like Dreamcast, Sonic and stuff. They know how to do these theme collabs right. So for the visuals, the aesthetics and stuff, everything in terms of design, this is what you want out of a really nice Gundam theme build with the Summit 6501W. Now to recap, yes, all that's good, all that's great. The biggest downside here, I think are those switches. I want to love them because they look so nice, but it's just not an overall really pleasant experience when typing. If they were properly lubed, that 
possibly could have been, you know, different for my outcome, but it's just the reality. They are not a pleasant linear switch to type on, and it left more to be desired. Sure, you can swap them out if you want to pick up your own, you know, five pole switches or three pin switches, whatever you want to put them in with here. It's hot swap, you can remove them, obviously. Uh, but for the price at $300, you kind of don't want to get other switches out there and mod it, you know, because this is kind of, you buy this for how it comes. You're not going to be swapping keycaps with like a GMK set you have. No, you're buying this Gundam keyboard for the Gundam build and the Gundam keycaps. The switches, sure, you can mod them, like I said, but at this price for the everyday, you know, gamer out there is going to be buying this. They're probably not going to want to buy switches and mod it even further. So... It's really great for that person who just wants to get a nice, more premium build that's kind of blending the line between a custom and a, you know, mass produced gaming keyboard. It is that fine line in the middle because it has the custom aspect of it, but it's not your just like crappy traditional gaming keyboard by any means. So if you're their target audience, if you can fork out the $300 for it, then I'm sure you won't have the same analytical approach like I do. This should be more than fine for you. So that'll wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll have it listed for you in the description down below. And if you like this review, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.